back, everyone. Uh, if there was something that you shared in, in your breakout group that you think might be really helpful for other people to hear as well, then please do again, please do pop it in the, the chat. It's just so encouraging to hear from one another's stories um, of things you've discovered, of things that have gone well, and, and also things that maybe haven't gone so well, something you tried and it, it, didn't, it didn't quite work. That can be really encouraging to hear as well. Um, so do pop that in the chat. Um, but I'm going to hand over now to Emma. Uh, it's great to have you with us this evening, Emma. Hi everyone, um, I'm going to be putting my slides in my Zoom background tonight, so um, you'll get the best experience if you make sure you're on speaker view. Um, I think there's a spotlight of me, but even if even so, if you're um, not seeing uh, the slides big enough, then click on, it should be the top right hand corner of your screen where it says view and make sure you're on speaker view. So I'm one of Abby's colleagues in the evangelism and growth team. And I've just got a few um, thoughts to share with you tonight. I thought we'd start by talking about the census. Doubtless you've seen the headlines. You may perhaps have read a couple of articles about the latest census results. And in particular, the religion question on the census, um, the optional question that they started asking in 2001. So in 2001, 72% of people ticked Christian on the census when asked, what is your religion? In 2011, 59% ticked Christian and in 2021 we've just found out last week 46.2 percent ticked Christian so it's been um, decreasing quite significantly every decade and it's now dipped below 50 percent which sparks some headlines and an increasing proportion of people are ticking no religion 37.2 percent now um and this is correlated with age. It's, we had an interesting conversation among the evangelism and growth team about what we made of these stats. Um, and we were saying, actually, we thought it was really positive that people are honest. They don't pretend to be Christian when they're not. Um, but actually, it, it, very simply, every decade, um, the older generation of who um, are more likely to have gone to church, more likely to have knowledge of Christianity, are dying. And the younger generation are less likely to have ever gone to church and less likely to know anything about Christianity. You may have come across this Grove booklet. It's brilliant, highly recommend it to you. The Grove booklets are great because they give you like a bite-sized chunk on a topic. So John Finney wrote The Four Generations. It's um, nearly 15 years old now, but it is still really interesting. And he talks about the different generations in terms of church going. So he says, um, uh, you know, a couple of generations ago, ad most adults went to church and they took their children. There's never really been a golden age, even in the Victorian age, only about two thirds of people went to church. So it's, ne it's never really been the case that everyone went to church. But anyway, a couple of generations ago, most people went and they took their children. Then in around about the 1960s, this shifted. Adults would send their children to Sunday school, but they wouldn't go themselves, perhaps enjoying some adult time uh, on a Sunday. Um, so the kind of baby boomer generation are likely to have been sent to church as children but less likely to have attended as adults. Then you move on to the next generation down, the children of the baby boomers. They may remember um, uh, having uh, faith as um, a child, um, but they don't send their children themselves. And then moving on to the next generation where um, people didn't go to church as a child, they don't send their children. And so the way, and it's, it's this generalization and it's not proceeded at the same pace all over the UK, it's different in different communities. But broadly, this has been the pattern over the last 50, 60, 70 years, such that these days, um, the vast majority of people, it's not that they're not interested in church necessarily, they just don't know anything about it. And they're less and less likely, a larger and larger group of people um, just don't have any experience of church going. The younger a person is, in other words, the less likely they are to have any knowledge of Christianity or experience of Christianity. You might have heard the phrase duns and nuns. Um, so duns are people who used to go to church but don't anymore. So uh, earlier generations perhaps went as children or were sent as children but don't go now. Um, people, to an extent, perhaps inoculated against Christianity, you might have come across this phrase, the idea that they've experienced a bit and maybe they didn't like it, which is why they've never gone back. Um, but this is a shrinking group, as we've said, that as um, time goes on, this is a smaller and smaller group of people who used to go to church, but don't now. And the nuns, people who don't have any faith, in other words, religion, none, 
never been to church, don't necessarily know anything about Christianity. This proportion of people is growing. And you could see that as um, a negative thing. You think, oh, gosh, what a lot of work to do in terms of mission. Well, you could see it as a really positive thing. Actually, people are potentially totally open. They don't necessarily have any negative experiences of church that we're having to work against. We're thinking about intergenerational ministry tonight. So I thought I would share with you the best and worst thing I have ever done in church. It's called Harvest Experience. It was about four years ago. And we had a, I was in a team ministry in a, my Baptist, the Baptist church where I'm still a member. And the senior minister was saying, we really need to do more about harvest. It's a really good time to invite people to church, school, primary schools, usually mark harvest and so on. So we printed out these postcards with the picture. You can see there with the little girl with the eggs and the harvest experience. Uh, and we kind of pitched it as, um, but we didn't use the phrase intergenerational, but basically all age um, creative opportunity to celebrate harvest together. And it was basically, well, I won't give it away just yet. So we started off 10.30, service began, welcome, a couple of hymns, and then we sent everyone out. At the time when normally the children would go out to their groups and the adults would have a sermon, we sent everyone out of the sanctuary into the church hall and the kind of church welcome area, which were interconnected spaces. We had about 10 different tables with different activities, all exploring the theme of harvest in really multi-sensory ways, creative ways, we had a map where we got people thinking about food miles and where their food comes from. We had um, some creative like potatoes um, painting, like where you cut a shape in a potato and stamp it. Um, we had um, things exploring the Bible. We had all sorts going on. I thought we'd thought it through really carefully. So we also had a quieter area. We had an area where people could sit down. There were chairs available. There were quieter activities. So there was a jar where you could write down prayers and put it in the jar. And I have never had so much really positive and really negative feedback about the same event there were people that stood up in the church meeting and said we must never do that again <laughs> um the church meeting in a baptist church is much like a church council in a methodist church never do it again they said there were um people i, I highly respected who were just like that was awful just no <laughs> and others who were saying that was amazing that's the best thing we've ever done we should totally do it again now, there were all kinds of other issues um, going on there. Um, there was possibly we hadn't communicated as well as we needed to, to let people know this is not going to be the normal kind of Sunday morning. But it was really to, to my shame, perhaps, if I'd been a nicer person, maybe I would have been troubled by this. But I found it quite funny, the number of people that just sat in the chairs waiting for the sermon. They're like, well, when's the sermon going to start? And it never did. And explaining to them that it wasn't coming was interesting so <clears throat> what we'd love for you to do tonight is to think about um intergenerational ministry in your church think about what you could do and um perhaps think about an activity that you already do and how you could share good news across the generations in that activity so it may be um that you've got a lot of volunteers and a lot of capacity to start something new and creative and if you have fantastic but I'm guessing for many of us we're not going to have a huge amount in terms of volunteer time we're not going to have massive capacity so think about something that you already do how could you share good news across the generations how could you have um, older and younger people together um, exploring faith and building relationships could you do something creative how could you make something you already do more creative to enable people of all ages to participate together. Um, we're going to be um, going into breakouts again. And so this um, is the question that we'd love for you to explore. And I believe we've got 10 minutes in breakouts this time. So think of an activity you already do. How could you share good news across the generations in that space? And uh, when you come back, we'd love to hear some of your thoughts. Tiz, are you able to do the breakouts? Yeah, they're going in. I've opened the breakout rooms again. Seven minutes goes quickly, doesn't it?
You're muted. Yeah. Girl, you yeah, might stop recording for a moment. Thank you. Uh, okay. Keen from the break, you may have to click to go back into speaker view in order to see my slides. Um, I wonder how you got on in your groups. Do feel free to put it in the chat if you've um, come up with an idea as you've been talking or perhaps any reactions. Perhaps you were horrified by the story I told. Um, any of your reactions, do feel free to use the Zoom chat. So um, part of my role in the evangelism and growth team is around mission planning um, or mission action planning. You might have sometimes heard it called. And I hope um, you have come across our church's future story. But if you haven't, let me tell you about it now. So it's um, guidance and resources for mission planning. There was um, an earlier edition that came out in 2019, which was a pack of a blue pack of cards with a picture of a book on the front. Um, this is basically an updated and expanded edition. Um, and it takes you from the start to finish of the process um, of creating, discerning together and creating a really useful mission plan. In my opinion, a mission plan should be one side of A4 um, and it should include just one or maybe two things that your church is going to focus on in the next 12 to 18 months to reach your community with God's love. It's not about adding loads of things to your to-do list. It's about choosing really well, doing one or maybe two things well. Um, and if you go to methodist.org.uk forward slash mission planning, you'll find um, a link to order this for Methodist Publishing for free. You'll find a link to download a PDF version for free so you can check it out before you order it or even just use it, use a digital version. You'll find extra resources up there as well. So methodist.org.uk forward slash mission planning. I'll just give you a little um, taster of what is in there. So card 6A, um, you will find <clears throat> the eight step mission planning process. And there's a summary here. Just realize I've started presenting and I haven't started my timer. All right, my timer's on now. Apologies, folks. So this is um, a process that, that um, I believe, um, and uh, I've worked on this with uh, colleagues who do a, a lot in terms of supporting churches with mission planning. We think these are the kinds of steps that will um, give you a really useful mission plan at the end. So deciding on a process, that's all about scheduling conversations that you're going to have together as a church. Um, when are you going to, um, what opportunities are there during the day, during the evening, for people to come together? How will you listen to your local community and so on? Community audit, you've already been thinking about that before tonight's session. And I saw the um, handout that was sent out last time. Really great, really straightforward. Um, just asking you to consider the generations that are in your church, the generations that are in your wider community and where the gaps are. Um, I, I would highly recommend as part of a community audit, also having one-to-one -one conversations with people. And this could be really, really simple. It could just be um, having a one-to-one -one chat with each of the people that use your building. Let's say you've got a girl guide group that uses your building um, or um, an exercise class, having a, having a half-hour chat with the person that runs that maybe talking to the head teacher of the local school, to local businesses, the local authority, um, just to get a feel for the needs and the profile of your community. Um, church Review, that's all about getting a feel for what your church has to offer, like realistically, what resources do we have? What people do we have? Um, what are we really good at? What are we really passionate about? And then dreaming together, that's, um, that's about thinking about the future. Um, church reviews are great. The problem is that we can end up only thinking about what we've done in the past. Dreaming together is, is imagining what could we do in the future that maybe we haven't done before, like making everyone in the morning service participate in messy church, which was an interesting experience. Choosing priorities. I've mentioned that already. I think this is absolutely crucial um, for all churches, really, but particularly for churches recovering from the pandemic particularly churches that may be smaller than they once were prioritizing we can't we can't do everything well we can't we can't do everything full stop we certainly can't do everything well what one or maybe two things can we focus on and then step six identify action so what are we actually going to do and we'll be moving on to that in just a moment folks to think about what actions you could take in terms of intergenerational ministry Consider the fruit, that's thinking about the fruit of your actions, thinking about the idea that maybe you've started to form in breakouts, or we'd love to do this, 
to minister among the generations and across the generations. What would you hope to be the outcome of that? What fruit would you hope to see from that? This is really important because often churches can get stuck doing things that don't really work for them anymore, but they don't feel like they can stop them because they think, oh, well, if it just helps one person, then, you know, we, we need to carry on. Considering fruitfulness enables you to say, well, we expect as a result of that, people to feel less lonely, people to grow in their faith development, relationships to deepen and so on. Um, and then you can look at an activity and you can ask yourselves, is it doing those things? And if it is, you figure out a way to keep going. And if it's not, you say, OK, it was good in its time, but it's not for now. Let's focus on something more important. Setting a date for a review. That's just about um, continual review. A mission plan isn't something that you do once and then you just put it on a shelf and you forget about it. It's something you come back to again and again, ideally about every year to 18 months, I would recommend. So we're thinking um, in particular about actions now. So um, we've asked you to think about um, an activity that you already do as a church and how you could minister among and across the generations as part of that activity. What we'd love for you to do tonight is to think of some really specific actions that you could take. And we'd invite you to choose actions that are specific. So um, avoid words like explore or consider. So you could say explore um, building an intergenerational element to our coffee morning. That's great, but you won't know if you've done it. If you just say, well, explore doing it, then in six months time, you say, well, we explored it. Um, actually be really specific about exactly what it is that you're going to do uh, and then you'll know whether you've done it or not choose something that's achievable um if you're a church of 12 people you're probably not going to be able to start a holiday club for example um but there are things you can do so make it something that is doable for you and then make it time bound decide when you'll do it i'd love for us to take just five minutes now um uh, I think I'm slightly over time, so let's say three minutes now. Um, I'm going to stop talking. Uh, you can turn off your video if you find that helpful. And I invite you to grab a pen and paper or get out the notes app on your phone and think, what could I realistically do, specifically do, in the next week or month or by a certain date to, ex to um, experiment with intergenerational ministry? Okay, folks, I'm almost um, to the, or pretty much actually to the end of my time now. But um, if you have got some action steps that you'd like, that you're happy to share with the group, then do pop them in the Zoom chat. Perhaps that'll be a way of making them concrete in your mind and helping you commit to make them happen. Gail, I think you're going to wrap up our time together tonight. Yes, thanks so much, Emma. Thank you for coming and just giving us some some really simple steps so that we can continue to walk in an intergenerational direction, because that's what we're, we're seeking to try and encourage is just that sense of uh, being able to gradually in time become more intergenerational. And that, that's partly kind of just how our, our thinking develops and evolves. So um, that's been really, really helpful. We would really love to just do some quick review. And some of you will have been to all of these walking together sessions. Some of you may have been for two or just come along tonight to see what's going on. Could you just answer this question very briefly in the chat, please? What have you found most helpful? So a short comment, a little sentence. Don't feel that you've got to give us three points. Just one thing. What has been most helpful? Giving you a moment now to think about that and type something in i can see sheila's posted a comment about making holiday at home more intergenerational that's a brilliant idea meeting with others yes we always appreciate a chance to to chat and see what other people are up to so
Fabulous. Thank you so much. This is this is really helpful for us as much as it is for you, because we're really interested to know more about what has struck a chord. And then there's a second question, which is, what would you have liked? So maybe you felt there's something that's been missing. So just pop into the chat if you think there's there's something else that would have added a bit more value, something maybe you were expecting, um, or something else that you would like us to have covered. So pop into the chat now. What would you have liked in these sessions? Yes, 45 minutes does go super fast. Okay, so maybe a little bit of a longer session. Thank you. We're really interested to, to hear what you think because we, we were intentionally trying to do something that was perhaps a little bit shorter, um, giving you a bit more of an evening rather than a 90 minute session, but really helpful to know your thoughts on the timing. I wonder if there's any, any content that you think that that was missing. I thought we'd we'd hear something about that. So please do pop that in if something occurs to you. So a few closing thoughts, just um, to encourage you, if uh, you haven't been able to, to think about your community, um, we would really encourage you to use those questions which we've described as a bit of a community audit. Um, that sounds a bit uh, professional, but those few questions to help you reflect on where you are uh, maybe look at doing that in uh, in the new year. That might be something really great to kick off the new year in your church. Um, we have uh, decided that because um, it's been so great to meet as this community that we would really love to get together again in the spring. So please put uh, March the 22nd at 7.45 in your diaries. Uh, we're going to gather. We want an opportunity to hear uh, what you've been doing, maybe what's changed, what's new in your churches. Uh, we really want that to be an evening of story shelling, uh, sharing and just giving each other um, some ideas of things that have been going well, things we've tried that perhaps haven't been so great, but just gather and be community uh, so again we can carry on learning alongside each other. And then also um, Emma has recently written a blog piece all about the uh, recent census data that was published um, we're going to send that link out to you so you can have a read for yourselves as well. And then I'm just going to close in prayer because we recognise that everything we're doing is about growing the kingdom of God. And so uh, there are some intergenerational prayer cards which you may have come across. Um, if not, I believe that they're available at Methodist Publishing Abbey can you maybe pop a comment in the chat whether or not I'm telling the truth, please? That would be helpful. Um, so let me just share. And we're just going to have a moment in prayer as we close. So who has shown you kindness in the last day or two? Cast your mind back. And for a few moments, thank God for that person and pray that they may experience kindness today from God and from others. And we'd encourage you to think of someone perhaps who's a different age to you. Has there been someone younger or older who has shown you kindness? So a moment to reflect. So God, we give you thanks for all these people who have been actively showing kindness in our lives recently. Thank you, God, that you inspire us to show kindness and to receive kindness. And at whatever age we are, it is a blessing to others. Be with us as we go from this place. Thank you for all that we've considered and reflected on and help us to become more intergenerational 
communities of faith. Amen. Folks, we uh, want to say farewell. Um, thank you so much for um, being with us. And uh, we really hope that you have uh, enjoyed these sessions and we will send you out some information afterwards so that you can uh, make sure that you come back together again in 2023 and uh, continue this journey about intergenerational church. The team are going to hang around for a few minutes. So if you have got questions, please stay in the meeting and uh, we're happy to chat to you. But wish you well and happy Christmas, everybody. Have a wonderful celebration of God's son uh, coming to join us. <laughs>